Hello friends and welcome back to Come Home Cottage. If you're new here, my name is Larissa. Welcome and I hope you'll stick around for today's video as we talk about ways to set the tone in your home. I am so excited to chat about this today because it's something that is so important to me. On May 10th, my husband and I celebrated four years of marriage. I would still consider us newlyweds and I'm definitely an amateur wife at best. <laughs> But I want to share with you some of the things that I've been learning as a new wife. I've been learning to care for my husband and the home that we share together. Although the tips I have to share today aren't all just for married people, it's since I've been married that the Lord has been changing my heart and attitude towards certain things. And it's by the grace of God that I've learned anything at all with how stubborn I can be. I can also only speak from the perspective of a woman and a wife. I truly believe that women have a natural tendency to set the atmosphere in a home. I'm not saying that this responsibility solely lies on the woman alone, but I find that it's the qualities of a woman that help turn a house into a home. Let me share a personal example with you guys. And don't worry, my husband gave me permission to share this. It's nothing juicy. It has to do with my first point, which is lighting. When we were first married, I noticed that if my husband got home before I did from work, I would pull into the driveway and I would think to myself, is he really home? I would see his truck, but not a single light on. I would walk through the front door and see my husband sitting contently on the couch watching TV. I would say, what are you doing sitting in the dark? And his reply would be, well, it's not dark. The TV is on. <laughs> Which, fair enough, but you can believe that the first thing I did was flick on the warmly lit lamp on the side table. I think that we can all agree that lighting can have major effects on our moods and the way that we feel when we enter a space. But I think this is something that women tune into more because my husband isn't the only one that I've heard stories of this exact scenario happening to. In stark contrast, as the sun starts to set, I'll slowly turn on the lamps in the living room. And once I'm finished in the kitchen, I'll turn off the main light, but I'll leave the light on above the stove. This makes me feel like if either myself or my husband wants a cup of tea or a snack later, it doesn't feel like the kitchen is closed. It's a simple yet welcoming light that leaves me feeling settled and relaxed. This past winter, my husband and I enjoyed late evening walks with our dog around our neighborhood, even on cold snowy nights. We would get all bundled up and would walk around our quiet neighborhood. I started to notice that many homes had candles placed in their windows, and I would ask people around here if there was a meaning behind it. I would get different kinds of answers, but the one that stuck with me the most was from an older man who was talking about the war times in Europe, and he would say that during the war, in certain places, it was common for people to light candles and place them in the windows for people to know that they were welcome to come in and it was a safe place to be. I thought that that was such a beautiful explanation. There's something so powerful about light. Warm lighting can feel welcoming, comforting, and provide a sense of peace in your home. This is something that will vary depending on preference or even wanting to leave lights off to save on electricity. But in that case, a candle is an excellent alternative in the evenings if you want to sit and relax without leaving any lights on. The second thing that you can do to change the tone and atmosphere of your home is to find time to cook or bake something special. This doesn't have to be an everyday thing, and it doesn't have to be an elaborate meal. Maybe one evening a week or on the weekend, you can bake something that you know your family will love that you don't get to indulge in very often. There is something so rewarding about making something yourself and serving it to others, even if it would never qualify for any awards. <laughs> the very act of spending time to find a recipe, putting the ingredients together, and serving it to your family or friends is such a powerful thing. I remember when I had moved out on my own and was living in another province away from my family. I hadn't yet met my husband and I remember feeling so lonely at times. Something I enjoyed doing was baking cookies from scratch. It made me feel like I was turning the little basement suite I was living in into a home. 
I wanted to recreate what felt like home and had such warm memories for me in my childhood. It wasn't so much about the cookies at all, but it was about the act of utilizing the kitchen for more than just storage, using ingredients to make something that was somewhat pleasing to taste, and I would often bring them to school or work for others to enjoy. Because above all, I wanted to share that warmth with the people that I cared about. And maybe I'm putting too much pressure on a cookie. <laughs> but I hope you can find the beauty and joy that comes from baking something special for your family and then sitting around and enjoying it together. When we hear accounts of what people remember fondly from their childhood, doesn't it seem to often revolve around food? They will say, oh, I remember on Sundays my mom made waffles. I don't think it's so much the food that's being served that is the focus of the warm memories, although of course we'd like it to taste good, but I think it has more to do with the intentionality and care that has gone into creating memories that help set the tone of your home. Being generous with your time and resources is such a blessing to your family, and it sets the tone of being at home and belonging. If baking or cooking really isn't your thing, that's totally fine. You can go to your local bakery or grocery store and pick up some tasty cinnamon rolls or cookies that you like. Boil a kettle for some tea and set out a picnic blanket on your living room floor and make it a special occasion. The next thing that you can do to set the tone in your home is to get up early. Proverbs 31 verse 15 says, She rises while it is yet night and provides food for her household. Okay guys, this is not something I do at all, but waking early is something I want to do on a regular basis. Usually my husband is the one up before me and he always makes me a cup of coffee, which I so much appreciate. So I think it's fair to say that waking up early is not something I have a hold on. But I want to be that wife and future mother who wakes early and prepares the house for when the rest of the household wakes up. I remember growing up, my mom was always up early, dressed, hair done, makeup on, and it always seemed so effortless for her to have that routine, that when I was young, I just assumed that all old people, yes, they seemed old to me when I was six, <laughs> but I just assumed that I would settle into that kind of schedule. That's not true at all for me. I love my sleep and it takes a lot of effort for me to change my habits in this area. But on the rare occasions when I am up early before my husband, I really enjoy taking the time to wake up. I organize my thoughts. Sometimes I'll do my devotions and have some coffee, wash my face, comb my hair, and get dressed for the day. I feel so accomplished when I don't have to rush around in the mornings. And when I can make my husband coffee or even breakfast in the morning, I feel so good knowing that I'm taking care of him in that way that he has a full stomach as he goes off to work. I notice that when I'm up early and allow myself to wake up, I have more patience and energy to be productive throughout the day. For me, waking up early sets a tone of a slower pace while also being more productive and intentional with my time. I find myself being more grateful because I have more time to think and process the things around me rather than always criticizing everything because I'm frustrated and rushing around. The next way that we can set the tone in our home is to declutter. So decluttering and minimalism is such a hot topic online and I love watching videos to help inspire me to scale down. I wouldn't call myself a minimalist, but over the past few years I have been getting so much better at letting things go that I have kept just in case or that I wasn't using at all. I am finally at a place where I feel like we have what we need while also having things that bring us joy. I like when my home feels cozy and so I need things that help accomplish that even if it doesn't have a particular use other than just being beautiful. We live in such a beautiful world with so much creativity and I love seeing that in my home, but in a simple way. If you are feeling overwhelmed in your home because of too much stuff, I really encourage you to consider going on the journey of decluttering and organizing your living spaces. I promise you it is worth it, but it isn't always easy. 
Sometimes we can place sentimental value on too many things and this can cause us to feel overwhelmed with the clutter around us. When I had too much stuff in my home, I would often misplace my keys or I had too many purses. I didn't know which one had my favorite chapstick because I had 10 different chapsticks. But when you scale down to what you truly need and want, things that serve a function in your home or that bring you joy, you can better organize what you have and get rid of all of the noise of the stuff that's left. I know I'm not alone when saying that having too much visual clutter is quite noisy. It's like having a radio on all day long, but the frequency isn't quite right. Find ways that work for you and your family to declutter and then organize what you have. Try to set up systems and habits that will help you be successful and maintain that state in your home. I won't go too far into that, but I can do a video on what I've learned in this area. I'm definitely not an expert and honestly you can find so much great content here on YouTube around steps to decluttering, simplifying and organizing your home. For me, I have learned that clutter creates chaos. You don't know where things are so you're wasting time looking for it, then you're late to where you need to go, and for me the chaos just continued throughout the day. Now that we have our clutter under control, we've been able to create systems and habits that work for us. We always have our keys in the same spot by the door. We always know where our jackets are because there's only a couple that we have to store and choose from. When you declutter, you also take away having to choose from too many things, which proves that you can have too much of a good thing. Yes, ladies, this includes shoes. <laughs> I know I stepped on some toes there, so I'll move on to the next point, which is even more controversial get rid of cable, or better yet, get rid of your TV. When my husband and I moved across the country, we sold pretty much 80% of our stuff and moved across the country with the rest. And when we moved into our new home, cable was not a priority for us at the time. Even though we did have this old TV that came with our 1999 camper when we bought that. Um, we left that in storage and we decided not to get a cable subscription. This was honestly the best thing that we've ever done for our home because before we moved and we had cable, you'd come from home from work and all you would want to do is relax, sit on the couch, and what's easier than flicking the on button to your TV and just kind of tuning out for the day. But what we don't realize is that the aftermath of having taken in all that information, whether it's commercials, politics, you know, cultural issues or anything like that in our world today, there's so much going on. And having the TV on is just another way to bombard us with information that we don't necessarily need to process at that time. So my husband and I, we do have a TV that we keep in storage and maybe a couple times a year we'll bring it out with our DVD player and some of the DVDs we still have <laughs> and we'll make it a special night of watching one of the movies that we love to watch. Other than that, I'm not saying that we never watch anything. We'll watch the news on our phones if we need to catch up with things or we'll watch YouTube videos and things like that. So we're not a screen-free home by any means. But I find that when we have what we're watching be only on our devices, like our phones, we're not watching as much of it. And it's not as loud and intrusive in our home as it was when we had a TV on all the time. So if you're someone, if you're a family that can control the amount of TV that you watch and, you know, it's, it's something that you aren't tempted to do just to flick it on when you get home from work or the first thing you do when you wake up in the, on the weekends then all the power to you. I wish that I had that self-control. But for us, it was just something that was too easy. It was there. It was something that we kind of reverted to when we were tired. 
or stressed out from the day and just wanted to unwind. But in reality, it was causing us a lot more stress and taking up way more mental space than we were willing to give. So whether it's getting rid of your TV, getting rid of cable, or just limiting the amount of time that your television is on throughout the day, that can have a really big impact on the tone that you set for your home. Without having all that extra background noise, your home is going to feel a lot more peaceful. It might feel unnerving at first. <laughs> You're going to think that something's missing. But as you settle into that peace and quiet, you're going to feel so much better and your your mind is just going to open up with creativity that you didn't know that you had and desires to do things and learn things that you thought weren't there. So challenge yourself and maybe get out of your comfort zone. But for us, I can say that it was 100% worth it. And number six is hosting. Having people in your home is not only a blessing for those that you're hosting, but it can be an incredible blessing for you and your family as well. Giving your time and your resources sets the tone of generosity in your home. When we focus on serving others, we can sometimes forget about our own problems, even if it's just for a little while. If things are stressful for you or you're feeling like every day is the same old routine, can I encourage you to step out of your comfort zone and invite someone over to your home? If hosting isn't something that you do regularly or ever, it can be intimidating and overwhelming to think about having people over and serving them. But like I mentioned above in one of my other points, it doesn't have to be an elaborate or excessive thing to be good enough to serve for company. Honestly, people will just appreciate the invitation so much and will be happy to be spending time with you. You are going to be so much harder on yourself than others will be. Start with something simple like inviting a friend over for tea and dessert. No, it doesn't have to be homemade. Just go to the store and pick something up. Instead of going to a coffee shop where it can be loud and expensive, Save your money and enjoy a more intimate environment at home. Put on some nice music and just enjoy each other's company. I can say from experience that it is such a joy to have people in your home. It continues to create an atmosphere of gratitude for things that really matter in life. And that is going to linger far after your company leaves. Don't deny yourself this privilege, but also don't deny it of others if they're inviting you to their home just because you feel like it's a burden for them to have you. If they're inviting you to their home, honor the sacrifice of them giving their time and resources because it really does bless them greatly as well. The next way that you can set the tone in your home is something that I've been trying to do since I got married and it's not always easy. And this is to greet your husband in a positive way when he comes home from work. Now, my husband and I both work full time and there have been times where I have been the one coming home late and he's been the one greeting me. And I can say that it makes such a difference when I'm greeted in a positive way, like my husband's excited to see me. After a long day, I could be having a really stressful day and when I get home and my husband has a smile on his face and he says that he missed me and he gives me a hug and a kiss, it makes me feel so much better and it really sets the tone of the rest of the day and the evening together. So I really try to do this um, in our home as well is when I, I'm usually home when my husband gets home from work. So I really try to make an effort and even if I'm not completely feeling up to it or energetic you don't have to go overboard you can just be you know happy to see them and tell them that you miss them and give them a kiss make the effort to stop what you're doing if it's dishes or folding laundry or making dinner if it's possible for you to step away it only takes 30 seconds just go over when they get home, meet them at the door, give them a hug, give them a kiss, and tell them that you miss them. 
and honestly watch their attitude change. Watch their stressed, dragged down face light up because you told them that you missed them and you made an effort to be excited for when they got home. And I don't want this to sound like a big production. It's not something that you have to necessarily fake or put on. I know that there's times where you don't always feel like you're in an energetic or enthusiastic mood and that's okay. You don't have to act um, in a different way that you're feeling, but sometimes it just takes a little bit of intentionality and sometimes we do need to put in that extra effort to make our husbands or loved ones feel special. And the last one is if you are a believer in Jesus Christ and your home is centered around the Lord, something that we have done or something that I've done in every place that I've lived is I've had my parents pray over my home. And that's not something that I initiated. That's just something that my parents have always done for me is whenever I've moved into a new place, they will We will go into the living room or the kitchen and we will, they'll say a blessing over my home. And I think there's something just so special about that is having your parent, whether it's your parents or, you know, elders from the church, a pastor, people in the community that are believers that can just come into your home. If you want to invite them over for a cup of coffee and some dessert, and then just sit in the living room together and have them pray a blessing over your home. You and your husband, your spouse, you guys can continue to pray over your home and your household, and that God would just have his hand upon you guys, but I think it's it's just a special thing to have um, other people praying for you, with you, in your home. So if you have the ability to do that, if that's something that would be important to you, I think it's so beneficial to be able to pray that blessing over your home. So that kind of wraps up the ways that you can set the tone in your home. And let me know down below, what are some other ways that you try to do? You try to to maybe change the atmosphere in your home or set the tone in your home and what kind of things are important to you. So I want to thank you guys so much for watching this video. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. We do videos on homemaking, homesteading, and simple living. We would love to have you along. Until the next video, I hope you guys have a great week ahead of you, and we'll see you next time. Bye.